Akagera National Park it's uh, receiving more and more uh, indigenous species like uh, black rhino, white rhino and we feel that uh, in long term we'll need more and more um, uh, intervention and for that I think uh, we'll need a qualified, a very qualified high level veterinary. Saving wildlife, you need a lot of strategies. One of them is using veterinary interventions. Why? Because like among the threats to wildlife comes injuries, comes disease, and you cannot save wildlife without a skilled veterinarian. So we are on a mission to making sure we have skilled veterinarians here in Rwanda to save Rwandan wildlife saving each animal at a time. So today is another exciting day um, uh, when we start a wildlife capture course here in Rwanda. At this moment now we are packing and ready to go to hit the road and go inside the Kajana National Park. So watch us and wait and see what we can do together saving wildlife in Rwanda. For the sustainability, it's always good to have like in-country people doing the work. You know, it's fast, it's efficient, and in the long term, when you find people with a pride and ownership, really into it, wanting to do it, it's likely to succeed. So we need the movement, we need like many people on board, but also building the skills of those people who have the most exciting and extreme um, uh, passion to really saving their wildlife. And that's why we, uh, together with our partners, we have really uh, engaged or invest a lot in uh, training of runner veterinarians. Right, we're gonna go and dart at Zebra now. Uh, what we did now to prepare for that is to get the dart ready, which means we need to get the right drug dose, the right volume, and the right dart. That's all takes some preparation and planning. Once that's ready, then we can put the dart into the dart gun and then the dart gun propels the dart into the animal and then the, the dart actually works with a little charge and that then injects the drug into the animal. And that's what basically remote darting all is all about. No, wait, wait, wait. Which, which zebra are you going for? The red one. Okay, make sure you aim nice and straight. Wait. Okay, now. Really, you can see there is an improvement. The way we are collecting the data, working as a team, um, uh, working around the animal, the minimizing the time that we are spending on an animal. So all of those are coming together. Like so, there is a huge improvement. There is still a long way to go. Like uh, to really make sure, like um, uh, we are the best we can be. But there is hope, and there is already like uh, steps that have been made, and we are so proud of our team. This whole session has been focused a lot on, on hands-on. So this is a real hands-on cases, education, like learning. So every time we get a chance to immobilize an animal, we do the work and then we have a debrief where we discuss a lot of things that are happening, what we can improve, what we can um, uh, reinforce. And really this is real, like a unique opportunity for learning. Uh, when you compare to the previous session that we had last year, this has been an amazing time where you see like a really people of passion wanting to make a difference, but also a lot of improvement um, uh, in, 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 in the way um, uh, the team is doing the work. And really this gives us hope, gives hope for conservation, it gives us, gives us hope for, for, for protection of our species, yeah. 
This is my second time being part of this training and personally it boosted my confidence in wildlife capture and medicine, especially working on animal on big mammals that we have in Akaja National Park, including lions, elephants and buffaloes. One of the key highlights of this training to me is getting exposure of dating an animal using a helicopter, which is very crucial in wildlife intervention. Yeah, I think the second iteration of this course has gone much better. There's a lot more polished operations. Professionalism has certainly increased. I think the team is being more honest with themselves this year and really focusing on what needs to be improved. And we're actually seeing that improvement, which is, is really positive. One of the most exciting thing is also like that we get to bring like uh, also the new Lana. Um, 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 uh, you know, conservation is about uh, making it a chain, like having uh, people leading and other following to make sure like uh, along we have like a whole chain of people like really coming along to save wildlife and that's how we can achieve sustainability. As a recent graduate, it was my first time to get an exposure to wildlife. Experience with a lion, it was my first time to approach a lion and be close to it and see how it reacts to drugs, how the recovery time takes longer compared to, different, to other species. The advancement through the course was dramatic and people took things very seriously and I think there's now a readiness to really start learning how to do this properly. And part of the long-term impact that we want to have as WCN is, is not only supporting people doing conservation but also building capacity. And I'm very lucky that I've got lots of wildlife experience and being able to share that and, and helping set common standards which I think is, de is very much needed in, in Africa. So I would really, really like to thank the Akajera National Park uh, through the Akajera Management Company, African Parks, uh, the government of Rwanda through the Rwanda Development Board, and uh, some of the supporters, the partners like Houston Zoo, Wildlife Conservation Network, Oak Foundation, Dry Creek Foundation, really for supporting and making this possible. We cannot do it alone. We need many on board and all of us together we make something, we are making something big here and watch this space.